everybody. This is uh, Luke Spencer from Rock Reviews. You may know him from YouTube. Mm -hmm. The ever graceful and always improving YouTube. Oh, yeah. Wonderful place. Everyone <laughs> wants to be there. Everyone's in a good mood and always supportive of each other. Skies are sunny. <laughs> it's like the it's like a commercial from a cereal, you know, just raisin band with the sun shining over the YouTube sign. Yeah, that's what it's like every day. Yeah, it's wonderful. We love it there. How are things with you? <sighs> yes, I know, but <laughs> fucking weak. See. Everyone, there's a lot going on in the world, and when you have personal, just, not problems, just, like, annoyances, I guess that can kind of add up to when you finally get home at night, you try to rest, see what's going on, and then you see everything on fire. Everything. Everything's on, on fire. It's, like, it's so bad. It's like, they look around and they, hey, is that not on fire? Well, that should be on fire, too. Bust out the gas, Johnny! Everything must be, on, I've got greedy floof on me. Everything must be on fire. Everything's on fire. There's cat floof on me. This whole world's going down the drain. Everything sucks. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I I would usually say, like, well, hey, can't get any worse, right? But I posted on Twitter yesterday, people need to stop saying that and asking that because we keep yes. finding people that make it worse and are willing to. So I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. Uh, so, it's Wednesday, and we're halfway through the week. That's something. Oh, <laughs> don't, don't taunt it. Don't tempt it. I wasn't. I was agreeing that the situation's bad. <laughs> uh. Okay, level with me at this point. Am I going to have nightmares after what I'm hearing from you tonight? Or I don't am know. I... I don't know. Okay. You, you, you missed all the poop. Last week was just Poopapalooza. Thank you for disassociating my name with poop. I appreciate the subtle gesture. Yeah, last week was the Poopapalooza. There's no poop this week. Let me, let me double check. Is the, uh... <laughs> let me double check to make sure there's no poo in any of the stories for this. Oh, man. Uh, yep, we, we, got, we got no poop. It's it, Okay. So I feel better. You got it. For... You got your wish. Yay! I'm like my little Christmas wish. That's all I wanted. Let's get the intro rolling. <sighs> Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And, oh boy. Um, well, there's no poop. Yay! <laughs> take take that for, um... You know, there's no good segue for this one, so I'm just... Let's just leap into it. Let's... Hey, no poop's a good start for me, sir. Never thought I'd have to say that sentence, but there it is. Let's leap into it. <sighs> Man screams at neighbors because his testicles hurt. That had better be some extreme pain, sir, if you're waking me up. <laughs> Westville, a 32-year-old man was arrested after screaming at his neighbors and threatening to kill them because ah! his testicles were hurting. According to an arrest report from the Walton County Sheriff's <laughs> Office, on June 10th, a caller reported a white man was, quote, on drugs and threatening to kill the neighbors with a gun. Deputies on drugs? Come on now. Deputies responded and made contact uh, with the man while he was walking on the road. The man was soaked from sweat, according to the report, <laughs> and told police his testicles were hurting. He, he said he thought he had parasites from swimming in the creek. An officer asked him what <laughs> happened at Cook Road. He said he was yelling and cursing because his testicles were hurting. Did you get... Has we driven home yet? that his testicles were hurting. <laughs> he said he was trying to use his neighbor's phone, but they wouldn't let him. He was apologetic for cursing and screaming. Police found his phone crushed in the middle of the road from where he had apparently thrown it down earlier. <laughs> oh, I hope that was that like police 
the cop that got sent to that house, I hope that was his first day, like right out of the academy. I hope that was the first thing he ever had to deal with as a, as a member in blue. That's it. What what do you do if you're the neighbors? You offer you wouldn't let him use the phone because he's a stark raving lunatic, ache complaining about his testicles hurting. I wouldn't want you in my house either. Baconator says that guy sounds nuts. Uh, 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 I, what was the? I, I want to know what the threat was. What was the death threat? That said, like, what was the severity level that got to that point? How do you word that? I mean, it's just, it, how do you, you end up in the middle of, you, you wake up and all of a sudden, honey, there's a guy on the street screaming about his pee, his, his balls. He just spiked his phone on the blacktop, honey. You got to come see this. You got to, okay, wait, he's coming. He's coming here, honey. Honey, go back upstairs. What? I, I don't even, but I don't get it though. He says he thinks it's a parasite. Where's what the hell? Where is the logic loop? Like, how does it go to this escalation so quickly? This I is even. Ugh. This is. Oh my god! This is something people don't appreciate is at any point, in any given day, at any given moment, suddenly another human being can be walking up and down your th street, yes. threatening to kill you because his balls hurt. Right, and that can just happen. He'll kill you, not like go into like a internal thing. Like I have to end the pain. No, the threat was if my testicles don't stop hurting, someone dies. What? What are you gonna do? Well, okay, even if you said uh, no, you can't use our phone. Get him out of the house. Then I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> It's like a bad improv game on whose lot is it anyway? And like the setup just gets weirder and more ridiculous, it's... except it's not funny and it's real. No. Well, he was apologetic for cursing and screaming. Awesome. I'm very okay. sorry. By the way, my balls hurt. But the problem isn't resolved, guys. I can't go to bed. Uh, uh, well, poor neighbors. <laughs> this next one's from Florida and it's it's. This is definitely one of those cases where it's in for a penny, in for a pound, I guess is the best way to sum this one up. Florida man, chug can of beer during DUI stop. In front of the cops? Like, what? <laughs> Authorities say a 48-year-old Florida man raised a can of beer and chugged it after a sheriff's deputy stopped him on suspicion of drunken driving. Suspicion? <laughs> I think it's pretty far past us. I'd educate a guest at that point. Yeah. Daryl Royal Rydell told Monroe County Sheriff's investigators he was scared when he fled in his pickup truck as Deputy Anthony Lopez stepped out of his patrol car. Uh, you know what makes you feel better? Booze. Rydell has three prior DUI convictions uh, between 2003 and 2010, and a fourth is pending from 2017. So this will be number five. Yep. <laughs> the report says Rydell got out of his truck, beer can in his hand, and chugged it. You know, honestly, at this point, five DUI convictions, I would be kind of, yeah, fuck it. All right. All right. So I might as well. I might as well finish the fucking piece. This, this was nineteen dollars for this high. Why this high you PBA. Know you swore that if you did that, then they can't get you on the DUI because because you're only drunk because of the thing you just drank, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't work. That it way. doesn't work that no, way. It yeah, they don't care as much about what empty beer cans are in your car as much as how much booze are freshly on your breath. And when you down the can right in front of them, <laughs> they don't even have to do the breathalyzer test at that point. No. <laughs> Come on, man. Well, may maybe this is like some 3D chess going on. He's like, hey, guess what? Yeah, you smell alcohol on my breath because I just drank a beer. Good luck finding the evidence now. You're going to have to wait 25 minutes. You can't prove I was drunk while I was driving because I drank it right now. And there's no law against me getting out of a drunk car and making my driving. I just blew your mind, man. What do you mean there is a law that I can't just walk around drinking booze? Oh, my gosh. Look at the. 
Look at that mugshot, too. That is a career mugshot, man. You yep. can just tell. Straight face is like, yep. Hey, Earl. <laughs> I in a while. How's the kids? All right. Straight face, okay. Is Johnny Darryl. playing softball still? <laughs> God. Where was this in Florida? Why? I'm, thank, oh, I'm so glad. Big Coppet Key, which is one of those little islands. <laughs> They shipped him off to an island after his third DUI. I said, okay, you can drive, but only here. The Florida Keys, which I've never understood, that we built a bridge right. out to them. Right. To nothing. Literally to nothing. There is nothing on those no. keys. I've been there. We, But we had a bridge out to them. You know, we could Sorry. just we could just get rid of that bridge and solve a lot of problems. This guy, big cop at Key. Flo oh, man. I, he's in jail without bond. Okay. Why did it take, after the fourth DUI pending from last year, and they looked at his history, why did the judge go, all right, you go home and really think about what you did this time? <laughs> what the heck? No. At this point, how does that, you can't, he can't have a license anymore. Tear up his license in front of him. Can't. Make sure he knows he can't drive anymore legally. And then again, I don't think the law really is a concern on this <laughs> Man, just the headline on like Daryl Riedel, Riedel, man chugs beer in front of deputy. <laughs> no fucks given. <laughs> and speaking of drinking a wee bit too much, this is from Minnesota. Everybody sent me this story because the picture, y'all, the picture. Woman gets head stuck in exhaust pipe. <laughs> At Winstock Music Festival in Minnesota, the fire department had to cut the pipe to free her head. An underage drinker got her head stuck in a tailpipe at Winstock County Music Festival in Winstead, Minnesota over the weekend. The McLeod County Sheriff's Department uh, tells BMTN that the girl was given a citation for a minor after the fire department used a giant saw to free her head from the darkness of an exhaust pipe. The darkness. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right. How, how, how yeah. does this become you? That is not normal drunk person behavior. Even at every festival I've ever been to, and that's a lot, that doesn't always happen. No. People don't get that drunk where they're trying to shove their head into random car parts. There has to be a reason. I've never been that drunk. Yeah. I have been very drunk at various points in my... Do you know who I feel pissed off for? Whoever's mm. truck that was. Yeah, if that wasn't her truck, then man, there's got to be some anger going on. That's not back. her truck. If that was her truck, she'd have done this before. You think? I don't know, man. If she might have mm. thought about it before, but she probably got the booze in her system at a festival. Regardless, can you imagine being outside for 12 hours straight, finally going back to your truck exhausted, and you can't because there's a woman <laughs> stuck in the back of it? I, w I, would, I would be sitting there going, you know, I could just drive off. I could. The exhaust should shoot her out like a, like a little puff of air. Yeah, that, would, that should work. I mean, she deserves it, by the way. I mean, she got to ask for it herself. Also, I just, this is cruel, but she has this coming. I could see her asking her friend, like if she has a friend right around, this is the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to me. And the friend goes, I don't mean to add to your trouble, but your underwear's showing. Oh, no, 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 no. We'll spare uh, her the embarrassment of naming her, but she's taken ownership of the incident by writing on Facebook, quote, yeah, I'm the tailpipe girl. What you know about it? Hashtag Winstock 2K18 kicked my ass. Oh, no. Uh, it did way worse than that. You get sunburned bad. That's what that hashtag's for. You get dehydrated. No. Uh, <sighs> How are you proud of that, lady? I'm sorry. I, I'm not looking <sighs> at the camera. I'm just staring at this image. How? How are you going to, like, just look for high fives from people? After that, did she ex did she admit or say why she did it? RPGaholic says it kicked her ass. She must be exhausted. Oh, God. Your chat room, sir, tonight they're awful is tonight. is they're really awful. really reaching. 
Not as far as this lady's head up this tailpipe, but still. Well, I, no, I mean, there has to be. Did she reach up there? Like, was it like a raccoon and she saw something shiny? That's a, I mean, that's a better guess than anything else I can think of. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm also kind of, kind of, why do you have a tailpipe this big? That big, yeah, I was thinking that too, like it was like one of those extension cans, you know? But even those aren't that big to fit a human head in. Are you rolling coal or some shit? Cause... <laughs> Diesel's for sissies, I just shovel raw coal into my engine. You know, you get a, you get an exhaust pipe that big, you're gonna have to expect sooner or later someone's gonna get their head stuck in it. Yeah, even if it's just small animals building a nest, <laughs> even that's your least of your problems now. Now you have this lady in Minnesota. <laughs> you have to shoo away the drunk kids from your truck every morning before you go to work. What? <laughs> I still don't. I still don't get the hashtag and the whole. Yeah, I'm the tail pop girl. What you know about it? Is that how she addresses people now? Is she gonna go like on book signings and like convention meetings, like introducing herself that way? Cash me outside. How about that? <laughs> hey, she never did that. <clears throat> She's true. awful, but she never did that. Well, speaking of raccoons and small animals, we have a wonderful little bit of Schadenfreude. I, I'm I'm kind of happy about this story. <laughs> this okay, one so this one made me smile. Someone got comeuppance. Colorado man attempting to shoot raccoon shoots himself. <laughs> you idiot. I hate <laughs> Colorado Springs. Police say a 67 year old Colorado man, i.e. old enough to know better. 67? Attempted to shoot a raccoon on a utility pole, shot himself in the lower leg instead. What? The shooting was reported just after midnight Tuesday. <laughs> Police say the man was taken to a lo local hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Police say the man told them he was using a handgun to shoot at the raccoon. Oh. Besides a leg wound, police say the man likely faced a citation for prohibited use of a weapon. How about you take that gun away from him? I know the gun issue is a big deal right now. He doesn't get a gun anymore. He doesn't get a gun anymore. He doesn't get a gun. Can we at least start there? I'm also trying to think, yeah. The raccoon's up there, and your leg is down there. I bet you I could shoot it without getting out of bed, Charlene. How? What? I was going to use my leg as the guide so I don't have to line up with the sight thing. <laughs> no sense. That's what? how? <laughs> Smappy oh. says, the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a raccoon. The raccoon didn't stop anything. The guy shot himself. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Also, does he just have his handgun ready at the go, looking for an excuse to shoot at something? It anything. feels like, it feels like they're just, they just want an excuse. It's okay. I got to admit, when I first uh, got a set of, I, I, I buy new tools sometimes, like a, mm -hmm. like a power drill or a sander or whatnot, um, even, a, even a container of sandpaper because I was just refinishing some parts of my guitar. And I'll tell you what, once you get the tools, you start looking for stuff to use them on. You're anxious to try to try them out and make sure they work and yeah. do, some, do improve something. With a gun, it's a little bit different. Exactly! Was that 67-year-old man sitting on his front porch, like just like stroking the gun barrel and going, okay, okay... A gun is something that you're not supposed to, to want to have to use. Yeah. <laughs> and right. yet, you get it. You're just itching to put a bullet in something. And you choose a raccoon in a tree. No, a utility oh, pole. Utility pole. Oh, which could have oh been God. worse because there's, like, electricity and shit up there. Yeah. And that doesn't like bullets. And also there's metal in that, and it, the bullet could ricochet yeah. and hit something else. Uh, everything about this is wrong. This is like, I know some states have gun safety classes you have to take. Some like some don't at all. So in Colorado, do they just not care anymore? Is everyone too high to not? Colorado, pay Sp to Colorado Springs is like is I believe it's kind of one of those reddish areas of the state. Okay, but they're kind of a mix. They're they sometimes lean more blue now, but they are still a bit of a mix, like in different parts. I know that. Oh, but. okay, Ninja. I said I need that guy's leg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, we're never going to stop. Every time a raccoon comes <laughs> up, someone's going to make a rocket reference. I need that guy's leg. Ugh. I'm pretty sure. You know what? We, If you are ever tempted to buy a gun, I want you to go out and buy a Dremel first. Because sure. when a Dremel comes with like 2,000 fucking attachments. Yeah. So if you have an itch to just fiddle with something, use the Dremel first. Do some wood carving. Maybe say it, buff some metal in your house, okay? That will get the urge to fuck around with the gun out of your system. It's you'll like care, yeah, you'll care less about a random raccoon that you're never going to see again. Right. It's like if you have if you're if you smoke, they recommend you chew gum. You just switch. Yeah. So if you want to get a gun, get a Dremel. Get a fucking Dremel and you won't be tempt you'll when you want to use the gun, get, just go go and like engrave something. There you go. Keep your hands busy. Not by looking for animals to shoot out of your yard. Man, that is so trashy, too. There's no nice way to say that. That yeah. is trashy. That is, yes. You have to load your handgun, just go shoot anim varmints off your front yard, or off the light poles. I need that electricity tonight. It's, come on. Uh, he had it coming. There's no nice, there's no polite way to say it. He had it coming. That's, that's yep. just how it is. You Shot know? Shot and Shot himself. Okay, that's still. I'm still with you though. I still don't get the angle oh. and how. Chew ping. Right. <laughs> well, let, let's uh, let's move on to Memphis, Tennessee. Hey. And why, why, why does this keep fucking happening? Man charged after driving forklift through lit restaurant supplies. <laughs> <laughs> What? And there, there, we've got, well, there's a picture. Let's see if we can load this up. Yeah, guys. <laughs> Let's load this up here. No, 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 no. I don't care about that. Yeah, uh, right. and there, yeah, he, uh, there we go. There's a good, there, there's, oh, get out of my way. There's a, there's a good picture of, uh. Oh, boy, look at this guy. There's a good picture of driving through the front of this place. Memphis man was taken into custody after he broke into a downtown business, caused all sorts of damage. Jerry Modesto was charged with burglary, vandalism, and theft of property after he broke into lit restaurant supplies on Union Avenue on June 17th. This is a fun part. Shortly after police arrived, they witnessed the 29-year-old drive a forklift through the metal roll-up door and iron security gate. Once outside, he reportedly continued to drive away before being stopped by police. So, do you... He was trying to haul on that thing. Yeah, he, he the police showed up, the alarms are ringing, he's already broken in. He broke in through a glass, wimo, uh, glass window. He rummaged around uh, trying to find stuff to steal. Then the police showed up, so he tried to do a, you know, a, oh yeah, drove the fuck off in the, in, into the sunset. In the forklift, it did not work. It did Why not work. a restaurant supply store? How much value do they have that you have to break through that? I what? don't know. Poor lit restaurant supply. First of all, they named their place lit. I, I don't know why I got a little chuckle out of that. And it's like some old guy owner. But hey, that's great. There has to be more of a reason. I'm <laughs> looking at the bug shot too. If you scroll down, <laughs> yeah, he's like, uh, I almost had it." Drunk Ocean's Eleven. It just this, this is some Blues Brothers shit. <laughs> try to try to bust out the front door and drive off on the. This was the the big plan. <laughs> and hey, here's the thing: what? if had you not. Driven off on the on the fucking forklift. Had you just dropped shit and gone and out another win. window, you'd have gotten away. Yeah, easily. <clears throat> no matter what you took, because also I can't imagine you can carry that much loot with you on a forklift. No, it doesn't work that way. Like I just saw in the video, he was trying to like ra like driving. I don't know how fast forklift goes. He was flooring it on that thing. 
Forklift, I think, goes about maybe 20 mile an hour. I'd, I'd be surprised if it goes that fast. But Okay, not fast on the road, fast enough on the road, but fast enough inside a building. I... Uh, what? what how, okay, how did he get the forklift in the first place? What? It was probably already in the building. I guess. It's a supply uh, store, so, you know, they, they have stuff for... Crates and... Yeah. yeah. For, in, like, for the inventory. I just... There has, come on, man. Uh, and also, also, the chat is pointing out this guy looks a lot like Shaggy. Which, it's kind of true, he does. He, he would have gotten away with it if it weren't for those meddling cops. <laughs> like, so like, Scoop? He looks like Scooby was his, or Shaggy was his role model. and he's uh, like, role. <laughs> <laughs> He probably saw a talking dog, too, in his drugged up state. Riding with him, and then the forklift. Good on the forklift! Oh. Okay, so we have this last story. This guy tried to speed run my show. I think that's the person. Th this is a what the fuck is wrong with you speed run. Is this like a smorgasbord of all the things you can do wrong? From Pleasantville, California. That sounds happy. A Santa Cruz County man who wore a noticeable stolen sweatshirt during a bizarre crime sp spree, was arrested in Pleasanton last weekend. By the time most residents had finished their lunch Friday, Daniel Burns, 35, had committed burglary, arson, hit and run, auto theft, and vandalism, in addition to a slew of other crimes. He went for the full six stars on Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> I think that's all of them. Police said Burns was allegedly driving a stolen Jeep Cherokee that morning when he crashed into several street signs and abandoned it near Stonebridge Drive. Soon after, construction workers near West La Las, Las Positas uh, and Willow Road called police to report a, quote, suspicious man who asked them if they wanted oh. to purchase a rifle. We're just starting. We're just starting. Same day, police were reported to a small house fire and burglary. The burglar allegedly took a unique high school sweatshirt, which was labeled a name across the back, along with kitchen knives oh and alcohol. This guy's a psycho. Not far from the burglary, 12 cars were found with slash tires in two locations. Uh, later identified, the suspect later identifies Burns used the kitchen knives taken during the earlier burglary. This is said Burns was wearing the stolen sweatshirt when he used the kitchen knives to threaten a business owner before carjacking a driver near Bertle Avenue. Police say witnesses and surveillance re revealed the same man was involved in all of the crimes reported that morning. It wasn't me, it was him, it's his sweatshirt. By the early afternoon, police in Fremont investigating a theft from a convenience store in Fremont said store surveillance showed the same suspect wearing the sweatshirt and driving in a stolen GMC truck. That's the second stolen vehicle yeah, in this story. Had a Cherokee before. The next morning, the stolen GMC was found in Santa Cruz County. Burns, who allegedly appeared paranoid, flagged down police officers soon after the truck was discovered. He told the officers he had been on the road from a motorcycle street gang for several days. Per was allegedly taken to Pleasanton as part of the investigation. He uh, provided a confession and told officers of a stolen 22 caliber rifle he hid after crashing the Jeep. Wow. There's a lot to unpack, Nash. I'm going to need a minute. Combo breaker. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> he did all of the things! All of the things! At once! <laughs> the Baconator, the rare fuck it list. Yes. <laughs> oh, he checked them all off. Um, before we get like go through the crime list one by one, I just like to say he was on the run from a motorcycle street gang. So instead of laying low or leaving, he brought the most attention to himself he possibly could ever. No, 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 no. He was doing a full-on Warriors Running Man mashup going on there. Do you think he had like an 80s montage in his headphones while he was doing all this? 
slashing tires to the beat of like something straight straight out of Rocky. Hey, um, yeah. hey, Christmas tree. Hey, I'm over here. <laughs> oh, dude, hey, come say... and get me, light bulb. <laughs> he said he was on the run from a motorcycle rob. Okay, so mm-hmm. why slash that many cars tires? Why steal two cars? Two cars. Why steal the sweatshirts from someone else. Why? What? And why the alcohol. Did, Don't forget the alcohol. Why take the knives and alcohol? <laughs> why leave the shotgun behind in the one car when you steal the other? What? <laughs> why try to sell the rifle? If you're on the run, from, you stop and like, hey, man, you want to buy a gun? Ten bucks right now, right now, right now. Incidentally, side note, this has actually happened to me before. Someone tried to sell you a gun? That I was, was at a bus station in years. Washington. I was, years ago, I was at a bus station in Washington, D.C., getting a smoke between buses. Guy came up to me and said, hey, you want to buy a gun? $20. <laughs> no, oh my god. And I was like, no, 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 thank you. Um, thank you, but no thanks. Uh, thank you. I don't want to die. Please don't kill me. I, I, I'm not interested. Thank you. No thank- so yeah, that has happened. It is kind it is very disconcerting because at no point in time does someone in this state of mind slow down. They they don't try to build the sales pitch. Yeah. They're just they just jump no foreplay. They just stro- jump straight to, hey, you want to buy a gun? 20 bucks. 20 bucks. We'll buy a good, gun. It's a good well, deal. That's a good deal, sir. I guess I will take that. Thank you. What are they expecting in the response? Uh, 12 cars. 12 cars. So, yeah, he was on the run, but he had to stop and slash. Tw- Have you ever slashed the tire? Yeah, it's not easy. You it's, can't not, just like a, it's not like an actual slash and you keep wait, running. Wait, wait. No. I think I think I think it's fucked up that both of us know how difficult it is to slash a tire. Tires are tough. Let's just leave it at that. I think we both are in the same situation. We're not the one being accused of all this right now. Okay. We're not That's on true. trial here. We're not the ones on trial here. There is a bigger problem, and it's this guy in California. Oh. <laughs> Nash and I don't know how difficult it is to slash 12 tires in a row. With a kitchen knife. Yeah, exactly. That's got to be some Ginsu shit. That's like constant stabbing or something. Like, ur, 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 ur. okay, where's the next one? And running back and forth. Oh, my gosh. And that's only like one little piece of it. That's not even the whole day. That's just one of the many things he did. This guy was like, everybody else, every criminal in town, take the day off. I got this. I'll fill the quota, guys. I got this. Oh, my gosh. If there was ever a need for Benny Hill music to start playing around someone's life, this was it. This guy's earned that, at least. I mean, that would fit perfectly for this guy's shenanigans. I don't even... (laughs) What was at the top? Uh, Da-da-da-da. Had committed burglary, arson, hit and run, auto theft, vandalism, in addition to a slew of other crimes. Is <laughs> fluff for nutter, flutter nutter. Is today the purge? <laughs> this is like I'm sitting here like, are you trying to get steam achievements for real life? Yeah. Is that what you're doing? <laughs> All in succession too. Ugh. Oh my gosh, I don't had. By the time most residents had finished their lunch Friday, so this wasn't even like a 24-hour period. Nope. Woke up at 8 a.m.? All right. Time to get to work. We've broken more laws before 8 a.m. than some people have all day. The truck knife-wielding army slogan? Yeah, between 7 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. So Six and a half hours. I got to admire the work ethic there. Yeah, he was... Okay, no one's saying he's a slacker. That's no. not the issue. I, I if guess... You were, uh, if you were the judge, would you ever let him see the light of day again? I don't know. At 35 and he's pulling that? 35? <laughs> Shit. Oh, well, I guess the first thing we learned this week is um, 
space so out your Cal- cr- space out your crimes. Pace I yourself. Gonna, I was going to say, don't go to Pleasanton, California. Don't don't do all your crimes in the one day. Just you know, maybe one or two crimes. You can binge watch a TV show, but you don't binge crime. You don't binge the crime, cause yeah, yeah, just just space it out. Your life is long. Enjoy the whole series. You know, just do it one at a time. You don't have to do it all in the same one shot. <sighs> We've learned that uh, forklifts are not good getaway vehicles. I already knew that. Everyone already knew that. There's only one person on the world in the world that didn't know that. Apparently. This guy. Shaggy, apparently. <laughs> Shaggy. <laughs> We've learned that if 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 you get a firearm, get a Dremel. That way yeah. you, you have an outlet for your urges. Yeah. Get a power tool, take up a craft, build a birdhouse. Don't shoot at the fucking raccoons. Find another way to let off stress and everything. Ugh. We've learned just because you find a hole big enough to fit your head in doesn't no. mean you should put your head in the hole. Again, I, I, I already knew that, but apparently a lot of people don't know that, and this woman learned the hard way. She proud. She proud. She, it wasn't like she tripped and fell headfirst into the tailpipe. No, she's like, woo, I got my head stuck in there. Yeah. Give me on Insta. Give me on Insta. Oh. We've learned if you get pulled over for the DUI, chugging the beer is not going to make, make it go away. That doesn't dispose the evidence. No. That's, not, that's the least of your problems. That's just the le- Yeah. Speaking of high fives, you think you looked for a high five from the cop while he did it? <laughs> <laughs> God, all right. <laughs> Woo! Don't leave me hanging. Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> He has the high five. He just puts the handcuff right around his wrist. Aw, aw, aw. Aw. And finally, we've learned if your testicles hurt, don't share. I thought that was going to be the craziest guy on this and on today, too. No. Nope. No. Wasn't. Keep it to yourself or go to a doctor <laughs> or a hospital. Your neighbors are not your healthcare professionals. <laughs> randomly screaming at people on the street. Hey, my my nuts hurt! Spike the phone down. That's it! The first door I see, you better have an answer for me. Why my nuts hurt? <laughs> so, so, Luke, we didn't have any poop stories. Awesome. Is this what the the trade-off is? Fine. <laughs> we won't give you poop, but you're going to be li- scared to leave your house for the rest of the <laughs> week. Seriously, we've never slashed tires. 